Later. All right. Holy crap, man. Um, so SmackDown, SmackDown, SmackDown. I, I don't just mean to jump right into this, but like my brain is just running. Well, I was about to say a mile a minute. That's not that fast, but <laughs> yeah. I no, like honestly, the the first half of the show, it kind of felt like it was gone before anything happened, eh? I, right I, out of the gate. It it. it... <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I knew they were going to start with Nia, but I was just like, it, it felt like Vince booking. And I know that's the really first half. Yeah. I will agree. The very first half of that, like the eight to nine hour and so much so. And this is kind of what I want to start off with here is we were talking about the potential of a third hour. Yes. And it's starting to become apparent that we kind of need it. Yes. Honest to God, because like if we look at the way Monday Night Raw is right now, Monday Night Raw just flows so well. There is time to be able to tell the stories they need to tell. They build up the mid card. Mm -hmm. They have everything flowing. The matchups don't feel like they're all taking place during commercial breaks either. Agreed. Like I, I think, and I wasn't on Team Three Hour for a little while, but like I'm starting to become Team Three Hour after that episode and after the last like three or four episodes of SmackDown. Mm -hmm. It feels like they need more time to tell the stories that they want to tell. Dude, you, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head here, and I think it's something that we're gonna see going into the. I'm gonna call it the Netflix era. Let's just be easy with this. When we get into the next Netflix era. Um, I do see SmackDown going to three hours because they are going to have to adjust this roster so heavily that it's going to be a lot of key factors from SmackDown that Fox bought and wanted that are going to need to be on Netflix because Netflix is going to want the key factors over on Raw because they're paying the bigger dollars, right? Yeah. So... Yes. The talent that gets shifted over to SmackDown, SmackDown's still a very important show. So they're going to need to address that talent almost like they did in the early 2000s when they created SmackDown. It's very true. It's going to yeah. be for those up and coming talent like the Carmelo Hayes. I hate to say this, but like the Andrades, like the Giovanni Vinci's, like the Ludic Kaisers, the Trick Williams, all these guys coming up and really needing to build their brand. It's going to be extremely well done. And that third hour is very important. I agree with you. I, I can't disagree at all. And like, you know, SmackDown right here, they would benefit from focusing on the women's division with a third hour or even like the tag division. You know, like the third hour opens up so much because it's not just an extra hour of SmackDown. It's an extra hour of SmackDown every single week. Yeah. And that compiles like if you go from week to week, you go from having six hours of TV to tell your story versus four hours of TV. And like that just keeps adding up every single week. So the ability to get the undercard on the show mm -hmm. a little easier to the ability to have matches more consistently like Melo versus Andrade, like that tag match that we had at the end, which we will talk about. You we literally will. texted me during it. Like yeah. that was free. That was, that was free. for free. That was free. Really? That was free. Really? <laughs> yeah. I was, I was like surprised. They, they could definitely benefit from having, you know, a little more time. But let's talk about the actual show at hand here, the two hours that we actually witnessed. Yeah. Um, it, obviously, let's let's start at the end, okay? <sighs> let's start with Jacob. Let's start with Roman and Solo and Tama Tonga. Also, I'm watching main event right now, and Obafemi's on main event, and he looks like a freaking beast. Um, it's very soon he's coming up, man. I, I believe very, that very wholeheartedly. Very, very but with that ending right there, you are a Bloodline fan through and through. Yeah. You love their family. Tell me a little bit about your experience watching this right here today. Hey, dude, I am all about my OTC, okay? I am about my original Tribal Chief, but I have more of a a personal relationship with Jacob and, you know. So for me, this ending could have not been so much of a mind if you know what I mean, like dead serious, I am so torn right now because Jacob is in a position right now that he arguably, since he debuted, deserves to be in. He has been putting in the work. He is out of everyone in the bloodline in the last year next to Roman. Jacob is really shined. So the fact that we got Jacob actually attacking Roman and them touching huge is something that sh in my mind shouldn't have happened for three four weeks Maybe. dude i'm right there with you i didn't expect that at all no like when i heard that they were 
I don't even know if Jacob is injured or if this boot is just part of the story or whatever. But yeah. he's showing that he's got a cast on. I thought he was off TV for a long time. Yep. Like after that spot went to the table. Yep. Work or not. And it, the fact that he was there in a boot beating up Roman is nuts. Like that. Nuts. That, that, that collision in the corner. First off, Roman sold that so well. The eyes. The Going eyes. Back like, it's all the oh. small details that you need to watch. Roman sold that well, but the fact that Jacob picked up that much momentum and traction in a boot, I don't know if you've ever been in one of those boots. Those are not, like, grippy. So, I'm lucky enough to say I've never been. Okay, so I have, and <laughs> damn, bro. So Jacob looked amazing. Um, I think the teaser with the Ulafalu, and I want to get your opinion on this. I think the teaser of Roman getting the Ulafalu back was one, a nice tribute to Afa. I, I really think that was the first bit. And the second bit, it's a gorgeous teaser for when it actually happens and yeah. Roman becomes the true tribal chief again. I bought in. I, I I legit bought in. I'm like, oh, this seems quick in the story to put it back on Roman Reigns. Yeah. And like, obviously it was the tease like you're talking about. But it, it felt like for a second he actually got it back, like truly, and he was going to take it. Yep. And I was not expecting Jacob Fatu. I, I was potentially expecting uh, Tonga Loa to show up and uh, miss the low blow on Roman Reigns. Yep. I was fully intending it, but like it, it didn't end up happening. And I'm so glad that it was Jacob because he looked like a beast as a result. As always. He's a future world champion. I say within the next 12 months. I, I am actually giving it 8 to 12 months. Wow, really? Yeah. Eh? That's, that seems quick. A lot of people I, in my chat, they were saying, what if like he's the guy to take the title off of LA Knight? I agree with that. I think I said title. that. I think I said that um, going, my predictions going into SummerSlam mm -hmm. was LA Knight wins and they write something in for Jacob to attack him right away. But they obviously had other plans. I was very wrong. But I agree with your chat 100% that Jacob, US champion, just put we can put all the gold on him. I don't care. Why not, right? He's he's crushing it right now. Yeah. I just want to direct our attention to what the poll was here. I asked you guys in the chat, what do you rate every single week we ask you? It was tied at an 8 and a 9, so 8.5 is what the chat came fair. through with. Very I fair. I think it's very fair. It's think, very fair for here tonight. I think the second hour really saved it. Um, second hour was great. Yeah. First hour, and like there was nothing really wrong, I would go ahead and say, with the first hour. Yeah. But what it felt like is it felt like a middle hour of a show as opposed to yeah. a first hour. where it, There was nothing that really got us right into the show out of the gate. Mm -hmm. Like Andrade versus Melo, awesome match. Those guys continue to just light it up. Yeah. And like it, it's crazy to also see where we're at with that because like, they're trying to build both at the same time. And mm -hmm. I said this on stream that it feels like they're maybe trying to create a longer term rivalry between these two so that when they do move up to the United States championship picture or, you know, maybe over on raw to get, they've got lots of history moving yeah. forward. And it's going to be like this interesting rivalry for, I don't know, probably the next couple of years to come. They're going to cross paths a few times and it's going to be very interesting each time they get in that ring. I really like it. I love, uh, what are we three, uh, two and one for Andrade. And uh, every time they're in the ring, my chat talked about this a little bit during it. They're just like, wow, the fact that we have to watch this match again. And I went, wait, what? The fact that they, we have to be complaining. Yeah. They be complaining? complaining. Oh no. You guys don't know how good we have it right now. Like Dude. first, first off Andrade, the, the one of the worst things that happened with Andrade was him going over to AEW because we didn't get to see the Andrade before the first couple of injuries. Now we're getting Andrade helping newer talent like Mello and putting on four, four and a half star matches. Dude, everything about that match was great, except for like the slight little mistake at the finish. But these guys, I will let them be on my TV and I will be eagerly watching these matches every single time because these two are two of the best performers on the SmackDown roster right now. I'm going to run it back and say, this gives me like Eddie and uh, Kurt vibes from back in the day. You know what? I'm here for it. I'm so here for it. Those two just absolutely cooked. They've cooked all three times they've been in that ring together. And like, let's just keep running it back. You know, when we got that Cesaro versus Sheamus best of seven series, yep. roll with it with Run these it. two. Just Run it back. Best of seven. Let it culminate at a pay-per-view. Just, it's so much fun to watch right Exactly. Here. 
What was another segment that caught your eye tonight? Um, can we can we just go to the tag match? Can we just let's go to the tag match? To to yeah, let's go to the tag match. Because like I literally got a text from you in the middle of that match, and it said, and I and I quote, "That match was free." WTF? Yeah. It, there's no better way to put it. It was free, dude. Ow. It, 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 and again, let's run it back to Monday Night Raw. I believe it was May. I have it written down here. It was May of this year, and it was Gunther versus Sammy. Uh, I think it was Gunther versus Sammy or Sammy and Chad, and they put on a five-star classic. This match was as close to a five-star tag match that you're going to get. Dude, on free TV, especially with the commercial breaks, it went over two commercial breaks, I believe. Two commercial breaks. And the one thing I want to jump on before I let you talk about it is a lot of people in my chat were like, let Montez have a singles run. Can we put some respect on Angelo Dawkins right now? Because that man showed up in that. Angelo Dawkins, hands down, was the best performer in that match. You know what? I think you're you're on to something right here. Uh, Montez Ford shined in it. Yep. I will say that much. Mm -hmm. He got the shine. But Angelo Dawkins put in the work. Yeah. And he's the one that got us to that shine. Yep. And it was really well done. You know, we've been seeing this from Angelo Dawkins a little more often. Every time he gets into that ring, he's showing that he isn't just the other guy of the street profits. He is one half of the street profits. Agreed. He is just as important as Montez Ford. And... If you look to the future, that should be a tag team that is penciled in towards the top of your card, whether it be as a singles act or as a group or some sort. Yeah, They have all the talent in the world. And they proved once again here in this matchup against another very good tag team in DIY yeah. that they, they are amongst the best workers in the world. And Montez Ford, his athleticism is crazy, but the strength of Dawkins is yeah. what you're talking about. The pounce that he can deliver. Even the oh. agility, dude. Like, to catch yeah. a guard gano in that kind of cutter out of the second rope near the end there that he just contorted his body i was like you're like six five you shouldn't be able to get that low that quick you know what and i mean he works he works smaller than he actually he does. is he like really someday does. he's gonna work big yeah. and when he works big man the, the world's his oyster i i really really enjoyed uh, the Street Profits in this matchup, as well as DIY. Yeah. I will say this before we actually break down any parts of the matchup, yeah. is I feel so bad for DIY, though. To go from winning the tag team titles in Toronto, getting yeah. that moment, and then getting, well, just basically one pay-per-view later, not even on a pay-per-view, having to drop the titles to the bloodline, and then dropping your rematch uh, uh, opportunity, yeah. it sucks for them, because they scratch and clawed their way all the way to the top of the tag division, yeah. only for it to be gone in a month. It's, so I feel bad for DIY. It's almost like they don't have anywhere else to go right now on SmackDown. Like they just, it feels like they just got here, yeah. but there's really nowhere else for them to go because the bloodline are going to hold those titles for a while. So I feel bad for them. The hardest part about the, the tag division on uh, SmackDown is the bloodline because the bloodline has to have gold. It, it it doesn't have its aura. You can't just make the Ulafalu, the or sorry Ulafala, uh, the main thing. It, it, there has to be gold. So it's unfortunate that the tag division is at the mercy of the bloodline. DIY and the Street Profits. One of those two tag teams is arguably, in my mind, tag champs. But because you have to put gold on the bloodline. It, 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 it's it sucks and the fact that DIY I literally think we just run it to bash in Berlin where DIY gets fed up and we get a Gargano Ciampa feud on the main roster which we've seen it in NXT and how brutal those two work each other I mm -hmm. think it's a better way to get them in a singles run and run it that way right into Netflix and then see that split again. Gargano potentially stays on SmackDown, Ciampa over to Monday Night Raw or vice versa. Um, yeah. But I think that feud, the the main roster, the casuals, I'm just going to call it casuals. I don't want to be disrespectful, but the casuals. I don't want to be disrespectful, but fuck you. <laughs> but the casuals that just watch main roster WWE television deserve Gargano, Ciampa. Okay. Yeah, you know what? People who haven't seen Gargano Ciampa and what they can do it makes me wonder, have they gotten that type of fan base invested enough in Gargano Ciampa yet? 
And I don't know if they're at the level of what they were in NXT Black and Gold when the split happened. They were at the peak of popularity, which made it must-see TV. If it happens next week on SmackDown, or it happens after a pay-per-view loss, or whatever yeah. it may be, does it still have the same weight as NXT? No. No. I don't think it does. Um, it depends on the get, violence. Depends. Could sorry. we get there? Yes. Like, could we get there with Johnny Gargano and Ciampa? Yeah. Will it take another year? I think so. Okay. And so if we're going to get us to care about a split of DIY, they have to tag together for, a mu for much longer on the main roster. Agreed. 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 We'll see where they go with that, though. Um, hey, look, at the end of the day, if it does end up happening, I personally care about Gargano and Ciampa, Same. right? And so I'll be invested in what's going on with it. It's just I'm not sure if uh, the general public is super invested in this tag team yet. Mm -hmm. But, hey, we heard the reaction for them in Toronto, right? True. Very true. So, um, do you want to do you want to run through the opening segment really quick so we can get to something that felt a bit more valuable? Bow down. <laughs> Just bow down. Everybody bow down to Queen Naya. So I'm uh, happy for her. I am too. I'm happy for Naya. Uh, let's cover two segments because I want to cover the opening segment and then the first back backstage segment right after. Uh, so obviously we had the Tiffy party uh, that looked like it was uh, decorated by uh, the New Day. And you know what? I had to laugh. Oh, I had to laugh. I, 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 I loved the carriage that was on a cart on cartwheels instead of uh, them actually carrying her and just like rolling her out. That was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, but I did like the look of Naya gave me very Game of Thrones. Like maybe it was the crown, but I liked that it gave me the, you know, that strong Polynesian vibe, which I liked. Evil Queen Naya. Exactly. Didn't yeah. like that she didn't come out with the title. I, I know. Yeah, it's a, I thought that was weird. It should have been around her waist or over it, her shoulder or, or something shoulder. or yep. on her lap. I just yep. think without the title, it felt a little. There's too much separation there. Um, I, I'm not gonna lie. I found the singing hilarious. Oh, I, me too. I yeah. Was, <laughs> pretty, <laughs> pretty deadly, deadly killed the me. Musical. Let's go. Yeah. Finally. I, I, been waiting for years. <laughs> I was dying. I thought that was hilarious. So getting that whole segment, I think really gave us that little bit of tension between Tiffany because Tiffany Stratton obviously is a superstar on SmackDown. Miss Money in the Bank. But the disrespect that Nia showed her really showed that first little crack in the foundation, which it was so subtle, but it was so blatant as well. It's Triple H booking at its finest, which it's like, okay, Naya, heard what you said. I'm going to just let this slide for a second, but it's going to be like right here just in case. You know what I mean? So I really liked what they did with that. Um, I think Pretty Deadly, there was a pretty big mistake in that because they were talking about bowing down and Pretty Deadly bowed, bowed way early. <laughs> and then they were forced to try and do it again. And they they did the curtsy. I, think, like, I honestly think that's a little tongue in cheek at the same time. Fair. Like they've already bowed down to Nia and they're like, oh yeah, let, let's bow down. I guess bow down again, right? You yeah. know, uh, I, I love the singing. I, I know that people are not, there's going to be some people that don't love it. And it's just classic heel heat, yeah. build them up, build them up. And then the baby face Meechin takes them out, which by the way, very happy for me. So happy. So, so happy for her. She's put in work like that match against um, Jada Parker in NXT. Yep. This got her this match, mm -hmm. in my honest opinion. She is going to go in and she's going to make Nia look like a million bucks. And I think Nia is going to make Meechin look like a million bucks. Yep. But Meechin's not taking the title from Nia at this point. However, you never know. Weirder things have happened. <laughs> I think it's one of the most well-deserved uh, title opportunities over the past five, six months. Meechin has been one of the hardest female workers on the on the roster. And I popped, uh, like heavily I popped, uh, just because, you know, we follow her on Twitch and have that kind of little community going on over here. And um, it was kind of funny. That match after against Jada Parker, I, I DM'd her and I was just like, uh, did you lose any teeth? And she goes, no, thank God, but it was close. Ooh. So like, it, it's, I you know, have that communication. So I was really happy to see someone that I'm able to engage with get that opportunity and I do think she deserves it she's not walking out with it but it could also end up as a DQ to still make Meechin look strong going into maybe bad blood 
because and there's really nobody else to put in a number one contender's position right now because of the next part I want to talk about. Well, before we talk about that, can I talk about a little bit more about this segment yes. where I got Festival of Friendship vibes oh, God. from this whole thing. And like going into it, I'm like, it's too early to split. Yeah. It's way too early. Oh, but yeah. what I hope they do is if they are telling that if this is like a year long sell, like a year long thing that they maybe tell, maybe they do their own version of this festival of friendship a year from now. Maybe that setting yeah. comes back in the future. Maybe Naya throws it for Tiffany in the future or maybe. something like that. And uh, I don't know. Just the way that she said it's not my style, Naya was offended right out of the gate. True. Like, this is this is not my style. So something tells me that that's going to come back into play in the future. But I, I just – I got mad Festival of Friendship vibes from it. And I was waiting for the turn even though I knew it was way, way too Way too early. Way too early. We've been watching this long enough that we know we need at least another six months of this. Exactly. Um, exactly. But what was the thing you want to talk about? Break up Jade, Bianca, and Naomi. Nobody cares. <laughs> Literally, and this is not the, okay. This is gonna be the the turn of turns for people that know like how I feel about certain characters in this group. Bianca deserves better. Jade deserves better, and Naomi deserves better. The roster is missing number one contenders for the women's title right now. Yep. We need this group to separate, and I mean like tonight. Nobody, well, it didn't happen tonight, yeah, bud. <laughs> but nobody – and then you have Naomi, have Blair Davenport go over on Naomi in her hometown. Yeah. Yeah. What are they doing? And this is – I was going to make this video this week, but I'm just going to do it here. Jade and Bianca are two of the strongest, most impressive talent on the roster. And honestly – they're being wasted in this tag division and you're not making the tag division prestigious keeping them there. Yep. I mean, look, we thought I was a big person behind the idea of Jade and Bianca as a tag team. I thought this was going to do wonders for both of them. It's not. It's not. It's something for Bianca to do away from the championship right now, but her she's kind of needed around the championship at yep. this very moment um i will say one thing i want to point out about this though and like my chat you know i might just be looking way too much into it because i did this back when judgment day was recruiting new members and i'm like oh purple they must be judgment day but did you notice that bianca and jade were both rocking black while naomi was rocking the the yellow i think it was yeah and then carmelo hayes kind of just interjected into that segment also rocking all black is there like a faction potentially forming here behind the scenes i don't because i would be down for mellow bianca jade and like someone else to be like a group of four i'm i'm about that and i think that would be a great decision but i just think you're looking too much into it um, Naomi being in her hometown being the glow her match being next with her entrance like I just see that separation being there, but Naomi or uh, Bianca and Jade have been leveling it out and like matching for the past several weeks. And I don't think I've ever seen Mello outside of NXT and anything but black. So I think you might be yeah. looking too much into it, but probably if that but was a Bianca faction, Jade rocking the black is new. Oh, if that was a faction that we could bring together though, like I'm Bianca, Jade, Mello, and who could be a fourth guys let us know in the comments who could be a fourth hmm very interesting uh i saw somebody say add the street profits in now that they don't have um bobby lashley in a group but that feels that's five and then you add b fed that's six that's six are we at, are we making another lwo over here or what yeah like, and that's also like who are they gonna feud with the bloodline like yeah like well <laughs> i mean there's no females look, in the bloodline look, i'm not unless I'm not oh that. naomi that's for another video. Anyways. Another video. Okay. <laughs> uh, what else happened on SmackDown here today? Uh, there Kevin was... Owens. Uh, oh, hold yeah, on. Kevin Owens, uh, right? Can we, let me, yeah. let me, just, hold on. Before we go Kevin's Cody, sorry. Let's go. I want to go to Legado del Fantasma for a second. Okay. Sure. And this LA Knight feud. Is anyone very surprised that they allowed the San or the S goal bar C thing to carry over more than one week? Because when he said that last week, I was like, 
what? Like that, and like the crowd went flat. Mm. So the fact that they're allowing this to run is actually crazy to me. But, a little bit, eh? But I do like this cartel vibe that we're really getting now with Legado del Fantasma. Get them away from the LWO and that whole Latino feud that went on for, in my mind, far too long. But you now have a true vibe which I got from that segment and then LA Knight coming out and re really referencing the entire the entire segment putting almost putting it over by burying it. Does that make sense? That makes sense. I get what you're saying. So, yeah. LA Knight really helped push that. He goes, "Oh, that looked like the most depressing dinner." Oh shit, did I miss something? Like, you know what I mean? Like I was I was cutting it up. I was like, "Nobody polished the wine glasses. They looked yeah. had fingerprints all over them, whatever." But I like what they're doing here. I, it's going to be a really strong feud for LA Knight's first title defense, and you know Santos is no pushover. He's he's got he's got stature, and at the end of the day, Legato is a, a bona fide faction that's been around for quite some time. This is literally what happened in NXT with Santos Escobar. The build is to a T exactly the same, and they built him up in this like. <laughs> this cartel-esque vibe where he's having dinner and he's talking to his faction. They were different members back then. They were uh, Joaquin Wilde and Cruz del Toro. Yeah. But, like, it's exactly the same. Um, it's even got Electra Lopez there, you know? Like, it is the same. Yeah. And it worked before. There's zero reason why it won't work again. Yeah. No, I, 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 I really liked it. But let's go into... Um, let's talk about Grayson Waller and Tice Austin uh, Austin Theory backstage doing what know. these two do best, just running their mouths, and you can see the final cracks happening here with these two. Um, there's going to be a great feud between Waller and Theory in the coming months, but uh, the, <laughs> Waller just bare, putting his foot in his mouth. Over and over with KO standing behind him, man. A lot of people were saying that these two were giving giving off SpongeBob and Patrick vibes uh, in the <laughs> backstage segment, <laughs> which I saw. I I saw it completely. Uh, but Kevin Owens rocking the RKO shirt uh, with the KO shirt on his shoulder, um, and I thought we were gonna get a double knockout again. But I thought so too. Yeah. But going into up. going into this match, you, you just saw the mood that Kevin Owens was in. Um, but did we get a hint of a Kevin Owens turn here? Yes, we most certainly did, brother. Uh, the old KO, the pop up power bomb coming back, the yeah. going for the ring apron power bomb at the very end before. Uh, I, it was Grayson Waller that saved Austin Theory. Yeah, or other way no, around. Other way around. Other way around. Other way around. Yeah, before Austin Theory saved Grayson Waller, I th and he even said, "You want the old KO back? Yeah. You want the old KO back? Well, the old KO is the prize fighter. Yeah, and the old KO is going to do everything and anything to win that championship because." He does it for his family, and it means more money in the bank, and he is about to return back to that. The reason why he didn't want the title match to begin with is because he knows that if he goes down this path again, there is no coming back from it. Exactly. Cody Rhodes is one of his dearest, closest friends in WWE. He doesn't want to unlock that. Cody Rhodes has given him this golden opportunity, mm -hmm. and even Kevin said today that I was an idiot for turning it down yeah what was i doing yep and then he goes down to the ring teases the old ko and that moment where he's standing there with the steel chair in hand and cody puts it down first yeah and he just drops at the same time he's like oh man just that moment where we all thought you thought it admit I, it you I, thought it was 100 percent. i thought it and i also thought it when he obviously had the title in his hands and he just snapped up and i was like oh he's he's actually gonna hit him I was like, okay, this is a bit early, but I'll take it. Um, but you can't have Kevin Owens in a feud that is face versus face. It's not possible. It's not believable. Well, you, you can go into the first match. You can go into the first match face versus face, but something has to happen after that. If Kevin Owens takes this L in Berlin, he is turning. Oh, he's going to he snap. Is turning. He's going to snap. He's going to absolutely snap on Cody Rhodes. 
And if we look at the name of the next pay-per-view after that, it's called Bad Blood. Mm -hmm. And to me, there is a common theme amongst all these matches that are being positioned for Bad Blood. I don't know what the card's going to be like, but I'm going to take a wild guess here that these five matches that we're going to get on it is going to be Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk. Mm -hmm. whether it's inside Hell in a Cell or what is the stipulation, but we're getting that match, I believe. We're probably getting Roman Reigns versus Solo Sokoa, Bloodline Rules, the name of the pay-per-view, Bad Blood. I think there's going to be something involving the uh, the whole Bloodline story. Yeah. But then we look at, like, say, maybe Rhea Ripley versus Liv Morgan. That's got some Has bad to be. blood to Has it. Has to. I think that's going to go down there. Damian Priest versus Finn Balor. That's got some bad blood to it. Yep. And then the fifth one, what Cody's being advertised for it, yep. right? He's been all over the promos, so he's probably going to be on the card. So you're looking at probably Kevin Owens versus Cody Rhodes, too, at Bad Blood. And all of those have the common theme of betrayal. Yep. Each and every single one. Absolutely. Um, the only thing I'm going to throw in there, just for, like, a little swerve, is uh, Randy Orton costs uh, Cody Rhodes the title or costs KO the title, and it's a triple threat. Hey, you know what? I'd be down for that. Uh, anyway, like, did you hear earlier uh, during Cody Rhodes's podcast or whatever his show is that he's got going on? He had Randy Orton on it, and so Randy Orton said if he could pick one person that he was going to face in his retirement match, if it was today, yep. it'd be Cody Rhodes. So maybe we can save that the, for mania. The seeds have been planted. <laughs> yep. We're building slowly towards it. I wonder if it's going to be mania next year though, it's to be, be perfectly honest with you. It's gotta be, but Randy just signed a extension. Yeah. Randy, yeah. Just, Randy just signed a three year, three year, five year extension. One of the two. And uh, so we're not seeing Randy retire anytime soon. So, Nope. Well, man, I think that pretty much covers everything on the show. Uh, live chat, you guys were great here tonight. I hope uh, your chat was great tonight for you there, Tesh. Yeah. But we're going to do this after every Raw and every single SmackDown. And I are, are, is it going to be uploaded somewhere, Tesh? Are we doing yeah. that? So I'm going to I'm gonna mess around with this and just get a few clips and a few edits. And this should be up on YouTube uh, within the next 45 minutes. And we'll do that. Uh, so Monday Night Raws, Friday Night Smackdowns, and then probably any PLEs um, that we feel are worthy for it. Um, I'm wondering if we even dare. Do we dare, Con, do one for all in, considering it's a seven and a half hour pay per view or whatever they're going to do? Um, we may, we may not. We will see. <laughs> But if you guys want more of these, if you enjoyed listening to us yap away for a half hour, give us a W in the chat. Make sure you guys are all following Mr. Teshk on Twitch, on Twitter, all that great stuff right there. A YouTube as well. Dude, you've been dropping mad heat for videos. I've I've been dropping some good videos. Uh, we've got like a little transition. I know I've been like stop and go, stop and go. But I do have something that's coming up where it will be... <laughs> Very much more consistent, uh, stealing a couple ideas from some other creators, and it's going to be a lot more fun. So, uh, Love to see it. Appreciate Love it, man. To see it. If you ain't stealing, you ain't trying. Exactly. That's going to be my way of justifying theft. Exactly. Uh, I just want to give a big shout out to GT Park right there for the five gifted. Thank you, brother. I uh, really appreciate how all about, you being here tonight. How about I give a shout out to GP, GT Park for the five gifted as well? <laughs> Yo, love to see that. <laughs> He's in the Look chat that. the park, Share guys. that love. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Uh, but yeah, guys, we'll be back on Monday with another episode. So have a wonderful weekend. I hope you guys get up to everything you would like uh, and be safe out there, Tash. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. And the last thing is, guys, a lot of people in my chat have uh, been complimenting the layout. So I'm going to assume Khan has the same layout going on as I do over yeah. on my stream. So uh, just want to be a big shout out so to so Khan. <laughs> uh, no, it, it looks clean. It looks awesome. So uh, I think we've got one probably coming for Raw and yep, whatever the BLE yep. is. So I yep. uh, appreciate it, dude. Thank you for putting the work in. And I will have this up uh within the next 45 minutes over on the straight shoot youtube channel so go follow straight shoot uh wrestling on youtube and you guys can have this and make sure you comment and like amazing thanks dude appreciate you you have a great weekend we'll be in touch, touch. all right cheers buddy talk to you later talk to you later